The latest research by Professor Stefan Halfiger and Paolo Aversa looks at companies running multiple business models at the same time and what that does for their chances of success. Stefan and Paolo are with me now. Paolo, could you just first of all give me an example of what sort of companies are we talking about here? For example, Formula One firms, we, when we look at them, we think that they are only there on the racetrack to win races, but actually the reason why they are there is that because also, for example, they transfer knowledge to automobile companies and most of the technology that we have today is in road cars are actually being developed in Formula One or they transfer knowledge to hospitals or to many other industries outside Formula One. So despite we might think that it's kind of obvious that a company is within a specific environment to win over the other companies competitors in that environment in the core activities that are uh, particularly important in that industry, actually they have many more uh, interests and goals when they compete in a specific environment. So business models are effectively revenue streams? Well, it is a revenue stream, of course, you know, uh, it's a way of monetizing some of the things that a company do, but somehow companies engage in a specific um, industry also to have some kind of complementarities between the different activities they do, and despite they might not be the best, uh, the core uh, business in that specific industry, they might be in that industry in that business because it helps other businesses that are not related to that activity. You talk about complementarity, but actually also, as well as being complementary, revenue streams, business models can be in conflict. There are some business models that actually deflect the attention of the companies from the core activities and from the core measure of performance. For example, recently uh, Ron Dennis from McLaren said that they've been distracted as a Formula One team by many other activities that were focusing on monetization from selling knowledge to other industries that somehow took them away from the top rank in the Formula One performance. And therefore, there are certain business models that definitely help by monetizing the value of a firm, but somehow don't help reaching the goals that the firm has. Stefan Halfiger, if I can turn to you, you've got an example from recent days of where this has gone very badly wrong for one company, uh, Virgin, and of course its accident involving the spacecraft. Right, that's a fantastic example of a firm that is engaging in many different business models at the same time. And despite the fact that we may see a failure, a horrible failure in one area, the business is committed to staying there because they're excited and their identity is connected to technology and innovation and probably space travel. So that's an example of where companies are active in multiple business models that some may actually perform well when it comes to financial um, profit, but others may perform well on other dimensions. Could the space travel business model actually damage the rest of Virgin's business, make it so that people are uncomfortable about traveling with Virgin. My guess when it comes to Virgin would be that that is not happening, that people are positively evaluating the, the spirit of the company and the culture that supports these kind of extreme risk ventures. And to conclude with something from Formula One again, the uh, multiple businesses that they're in, we may overlook from the outside that if some teams underperform persistently in the races that they are unsuccessful companies and that may be wrong because they might be very successful when it comes to consulting external um, firms or ec people outside of the industry even and that may subsidize and uh, cross um, even fertilize some of the activities in the technological domain and the innovation that they need for racing. So we need to look at multiple business models in their configurations to understand what parts of the business are useful for financial survival and what parts of the business are exciting and fun to be in and potentially key for learning and innovation. And your research is available on the CAS website. Stefan Halfiger, Paolo Versa, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex.